Time for an update on the Meteor. I was up pretty late last night working on the brakes. I ordered all new brakes for all four wheels. I had the brakes working. Uh, they worked really well. Um, but after a few days, it started leaking fluid out of the, the, actually this wheel cylinder started leaking. So I thought, well, you know what, for the price of wheel cylinders, and they're really cheap on Rock Auto, and I realize they're cheap Chinese made pieces, but um, I've used them before and I haven't had any issues. I've heard some people say that the metal is porous on these Chinese wheel cylinders. I haven't exper experienced that yet. But anyways, um, I made an upgrade on these brakes. What I did is I, I converted them to self-adjusting brakes. Now the original brakes, you would have to take a screwdriver and a, a tighten them up or adjust them every, I don't know how many miles, every couple thousand miles or whatever. And in the early 60s, self-adjusting brakes came along. And until maybe a year ago, I didn't realize that the rest of the hardware, like the shoes and the drums and all that, remained the same. They just added, you know, the, some uh, hardware to convert them to self-adjusting. And I won't get into that whole process. Um, I mean, it took me a couple hours of work last night. And the reason being is, number one, I did not have a, a manual for how to do this conversion. And I had to go online and look for a picture of what springs are in here and all that and i actually ordered the wrong parts the first time so i've got some extra parts here that i don't need even the brake shoes i ordered wrong i made a mistake total amateur mistake make sure you order for the right size drums i didn't measure the drums these are 10 inch and i ordered for 11 inch but the cool thing is this if you have a car with drum brakes a north american vehicle i did not know this until a few days ago uh, so go on Rock Auto, look up a 54, well, Meteors aren't on there because it's Canadian and Rock Auto is American based. But if you look up a 54 Mercury car, look up the brakes, look up the brake shoes and uh, do this with any car of that era. And when you look up the part, click on the part number and it'll give you a list of every vehicle, including the year and make that these shoes will fit. It'll blow you away. AMC, General Motors, Dodge, Ford, Jeep, they all used the same brakes. I had no idea. I knew they always looked similar. Sometimes the springs are a bit different, you know, and the self-adjuster kits are a bit different. So if anyone wants to do a conversion, here's how I did it. I looked up my brake shoes for my vehicle. I clicked on the part number. I got a list of all the vehicles that they fit and included in that list was like a 1981 Ford F100. And so I went to the Ford F100 listing and I pulled up the self adjuster kit and I ordered that and it fit. Look at this. It all fits. Now the only change I made was there's supposed to be a different spring here on the 81 Ford. It was a little too heavy duty because I think I'm um, being, it was for a truck and this is a car. Um, I reused this spring from the cart, but the rest of the hardware is 1981 Ford F100. So you could probably do the same thing with a Dodge or a GM. I, I did a 53 Pontiac about a year ago, and I went into the early 60s and found a self-adjuster kit for uh, another GM product, and it worked. So enough about that. So I've got new, new brake shoes, new wheel cylinders. I haven't bled the brakes yet. Um, I did machine the rotors, I'll show, or the, the brake drums. So these have been machined. I did all four. Um, I did these at my friend Eric's shop. They still have a brake lathe. There are not very many places that will machine a drum or a rotor anymore. They tell you, just buy brand new ones. So I was lucky enough to keep my original drums, which are well built. And uh, I didn't have to buy cheap Chinese pieces. For, for rotors and drums, I would prefer to keep the original parts. What else can I tell you? Um, <clears throat> oh, the fuel tank was a huge job. 
uh, and I did not document any of this on film. So the fuel tank had probably almost an inch of brown goo inside, although it wasn't goo, it was dried. There was a little bit of gasoline in there and I just realized I left the fuel cap open all night. I wondered why it smelled like like gas in the crash <laughs> this morning when I came in. So I had removed the tank because I could see, I could see through here what it looked like inside. And it was pretty bad. I was kind of disappointed. I thought, oh man, I'm gonna have to buy a tank. And the tanks are expensive. And I mean, I found some cheaper ones, but you get what you pay for. <clears throat> Anyways, took the tank out. And I shook it around and there were huge chunks of stuff in there. And it was awful what was falling out. And then I took a magnet and I put it down inside of the tank and I pulled it out and nothing came with it. Rust is magnetic because it is iron. And it did not come out at all. There was no rust in the tank. So that was dried up fuel from 1966, probably lead. Um, so be careful with this stuff. I mean, I had, it was wet, so it wasn't, I wasn't breathing in lead dust, thankfully. Um, so what I did is I found a recipe online for sodium hydroxide, which is lye, in order to clean your tank. And what I did is I filled it about halfway with water. And uh, I mean, I tried vacuuming that stuff out and all that, and it, it just didn't work. So I filled it halfway with water, poured in a cup of lye, and then I completely filled it. And you gotta be, you gotta wear gloves and be very careful with this stuff because it, it'll eat your skin. So if you have a spill, you gotta be very careful. Keep a water hose nearby. And so I let it sit all night. You could hear it kind of boiling in there. And the next day I dumped it and it came out brown, which was a good sign. And then I, f I did the same thing again. Filled it halfway, put in a cup of lye, filled it up all the way. I let it sit again, 12 hours, dumped it out. It was brown, but not as bad. And then I just flushed it with water until it was clear. And that did it. I mean, it was full of barnacles when I started and there were no barnacles when I was finished. It's not super shiny, clean metal inside, but um, it's not rust and it's not chunks of crap. So I've got an extra fuel filter on the line. So the first while, probably the first tank, it'll get most of that junk out of the tank. So the other issue with the fuel tank was the uh, float for the gas gauge. Uh, I put an ohm meter on it and measured the ohms that it was putting out and it was all over the place. So I knew it was no good. And again, I didn't document this on film, but what I ended up doing, I could order one out of the States that the identical unit is not available anymore, or at least the Dennis Carpenter website says out of not in stock. So I did find the specs for the sending unit it should be about 14 ohms on full and about 80 on empty. And a couple years ago, I put a gas gauge in my golf cart and I bought the gauge and the float sending unit at Princess Auto, which is like a Canadian Harbor Freight kind of thing. And it works great. And I thought, I wonder if I can take that generic cheap sending unit and adapt it to the one in the car. And it worked. I made one out of the two. I'm sorry I don't have pictures of this. It took some drilling and fabricating. And but anyways, I made one working sending unit and I was able to adjust uh, the full and the empty and then roughly where half is and, and I tested it. And so once I reassembled the tank and put it back in the car, I poured in 20 liters of fuel and it was now, I'm not sure if this is a 60 or 70 liter tank, um, but with 20 liters of gas in it, it was just above a quarter. And then I poured in another 20 and it's at about three quarters. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty accurate. And when it's empty, it shows just below the empty line on the gauge. So super happy with that. Anyone who watches my channel knows that gas gauges should be important to me. <laughs> But uh, I, I never run out of gas. What are you talking about? So that's what I'm doing on the Meteor. I still have the front brakes to do. And uh, 
then I can drive it again. I'm waiting for a new radiator and new water pumps. Uh, I'm not sure when the radiator is going to show up, but the water pumps are supposed to be here next week. I'll probably do both at the same time. And uh, I'm not going to do any major restoration on this car right away. I just want to get it running and driving so I can back it out of the garage and park it wherever and bring it in the garage when I want to work on it. I don't like having to push cars around and we use our garage in the winter to park in or for our daily drivers. So um, that's why I want to get this thing operational. And I like to just drive it around the block once in a while. But overall, I am very happy with this car. I have no complaints. Um, it, I cannot believe it fell into my lap. And I hope to have more updates for you soon. Um, that's about all I can say about it for now. Here's the new radiator I put in. Brand new, no leaks, and it does a great job cooling. I'm so glad I bought it. And I also changed both water pumps. They look pretty rusty here because I didn't paint them. I will at some point in the future. So just a word about the fuel filter that I put on the Meteor. It's uh, actually off a fuel injected car and it's a big filter. Um, it's off like a 90 or 91 Mustang or Ford Tempo. They all had the same filter. Um, and again, it was for a fuel injected engine because they require better filtration than a carbureted vehicle. Now here's a carbureted filter one of these is good for, I believe, about 40 microns, whereas the fuel-injected filter that I put on there is good for 10 microns. So it's filtering out really fine particles and it, it's working. One of these plugged up on me on a test drive. So that's why I switched to the other one. And uh, so far it's been okay. So that's about all I've got for now on the Meteor, I'm slowly tinkering on it, so more updates coming soon. Thanks for watching everybody, I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.